I just wanted to uh, ask that question. Is um, I was uh, listening um, on. Well, we don't have to put their name in there, but on WBAI, um, and um, uh, Gary Knoll now does a a, a political part of right. this conversation, and I heard that um, this is now a problem for the uh, colleges that used it used to be that the co college was a place like a bastion right. of you know free free thought and and the like and it seems now that it's it's like you a, a small group of, of students you know can uh, demand and come into people's face and whatever it is and automatically they're uh, banned from uh, from the college and, yeah. and you yeah. can't have topics like when you start talking about um, uh, you know the Palestinian right. issues today. Boom, that that's right. gone. And and who's the gentleman that that um, you had said? Um, Colin Muhammad. No, you talking about Reverend Herbert Daughtry? No, it wasn't uh, Herbert Daughtry. Uh, 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 who's Le they, they, he had recently, like in the last months, had um, had uh, talked about something about um, Israel, mm -hmm. and automatically. You know, they uh, said, "Oh, was the, his his thoughts were anti-Semitic." Oh, that's Reverend Herbert Daughtry. Mm -hmm. Oh, that he didn't even say anything. That? Yeah, he didn't say that. anything about Israel. So let's just clear mm -hmm. that up. Mm -hmm. He didn't say anything about Israel. We invited Herbert Daughtry, Reverend Herbert Daughtry, uh, to be the guest speaker at the African, the annual African Heritage Graduation at King University. Uh -huh. This is a program that we've been having for the past thirty-three oh, yes. years. Oh, yeah. It was there before I got there. All right, but we, I've made some changes to it to make it more consistent with something that African people should have. All right, uh, we were told by a high-ranking official at Kane University when we proposed his name, and we've never had a guest speaker rejected at Kane University. Mm -hmm. You know, and again, we have to, when you really think about it, you would think that the university officials uh, would have enough respect for us as a people, our intelligence and our ability to time. choose wisely, all right, to choose someone that they would feel would not be so controversial as to create a firestorm, all right, but obviously they didn't think that way. So now you have to certainly uh, vet certain people. So we proposed Reverend Herbert Daughtry, who had been to Cain three or four times like prior, mm -hmm. all right. This one particular person who's the provost of the university. Won't even, I won't even dignify it by mentioning his name, all mm -hmm. right? Uh, came back and said that uh, Herb Daughtry would not be allowed to speak at the African yeah. Heritage gradu graduation because he was a divisive person, all right? Now, I was in a meeting with these people, and I said, okay, how's he divisive? Well, he was involved with the Crown Heights affair, or Crown Heights issue, What's that, 30 Maybe. years ago or so? Yeah, a long, long time ago. We're, well, about, I see. we're now in the age of Twitter, but right. I, I, don't, I, don't want, I, actually, I do want to cut you off. Right, okay. I, no, the reason why I want to ask, I say, here's my problem with right. Forget the 30 years, forget whatever it is. My, forget divisiveness. Right. Mm -hmm. uh, I'm going back to your point, Diane, about, about wait a second, free talk. Whatever. I thought, hey, I'm, I'm going to pay on that. Is it my school fees? Is it my tuition uh, 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 good enough? For me to have whoever I need to to, to you your thought. I'm mm -hmm. just asking. I don't want, go go that route. I want I want to hear enough about thirty years ago. I want right. to I want to say, is it my oh, fees? Money. Is it my tuition good enough to have the education that my that that I need? Right. I don't even think we need to go there. You know. I mean, you're correct. But I don't even think we need to raise that because of the issues I just just raised a moment ago. You're absolutely correct about that. But that's not how the racist mind thinks. The racist mind thinks in a particular kind of way. And where we're concerned, it was almost as if the person deep down in the recesses of their mind are saying that, we are not capable of making a good choice. The assumption, mm -hmm. the assumptions involved there is that we don't understand. We're not, and it's gonna create yeah, a problem for the university. This is what the person is thinking. So under the guise that we don't want to create a problem at the university for a person who's been here many, many times, who's well known in our community, well respected in our community, but they don't see this person as being well respected. And at the same time, this is why I'm, I'm gonna respond to the point that you're, made, you're making. At the same time, 
they had the former governor of New Jersey who was a disgraced governor, Jim McCreevy, right. working there. Mm-hmm. Right. They had one of Trump's uh, officials, John Bolton. Oh, no. Spoke oh, at Kane no. University. Oh, no. No. But Reverend Herbert Daughtry uh, cannot yeah. speak at oh, Kane no. University Even because he can. is divisive. And see, and now, when I raised the issue, what was his involvement in the Crown Heights issue? They could not tell me. Yeah, but what I understood, back this is what I understood, <laughs> analyzing how they think. The assumption is that if black people are engaged in any conflict with any other group of people, the assumption is black people must be wrong. Yeah, like That's automatically, no matter must what. Must be wrong. Right. Oh, 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 right. We I take have... a position. Mm, go ahead. No, no, you're saying that any any position, we're, like we need that benevolent, um, you know, father. Right. Okay. With children. The white, yeah, right. father with, with their children. Right. To tell you, here's how right. it needs to be done. He never, the person never I said a understand. word about the involvement of the Jewish community or whether they're, but the assumption being, again, he is a defensive person because he's engaged in some conflict with the community in Brooklyn. All right. He's divisive. They don't know why he's divisive. You see? Yeah. The assumption is. heard that. It's, well, we and were, and I raised this got. question. Right? I raised the question. He said, well, I've done some reading. I said, well, what was it? And a, a subsequent person, too, I met with someone yeah, else. Yeah. A what did they read? Exactly. I, so read? I said, okay, what was it? Right? The assumption is that he's a divisive person because of his interactions, you know, that type of thing. So, again, this issue was, and by the way, I'm sorry. I'm still stuck on John Bolton. John Bolton was divisive two weeks ago. Right. You know what I'm, I'm just trying to figure out. Well, what's he spoke going at Kane. <laughs> okay. Know. You know. Anyway, so <clears throat> going forward on this thing, myself and a few other people, who were former presidents of the campus-wide black organization called Concerned Black Personnel, I contacted a few people, and we got together with a former president who's retired now. I'm not going to mention the names, right? And we drafted a letter, which we sent to the president of the university. And then that letter went out to a number of black politicians in Jersey. Mm. All right? Mm-hmm. Talking about this particular person. And denial of someone as distinguished and respected and revered as the Reverend Herbert mm-hmm. Daughtry, okay. who had been at Kane many times. You know, all of a sudden now you're going to deny yeah, him. And so as far as I've been able to ascertain, the letter went out. We had former members of Kane who were retired write letters to the university. The president eventually reversed the decision of the provost. Okay. All right? But by that time, it was too late. I had already gotten another de- a guest speaker to speak mm-hmm. because it was mm-hmm. so close to the graduation, I couldn't you don't want yeah, nobody. mess around with yeah. it. Mm-hmm. But nonetheless, we brought Herbert Daughtry anyway because we were going to give him an award. So we brought him up on the stage after the, the official guest speaker. We brought him up and we let him say a few words and address the audience about some of these issues, which he did do. Mm-hmm. And so nonetheless, this is a part of that overall pattern of racist thought, speech and action. Mm-hmm. The assumptions that are made about us, you know, and, and by and large, it was a form well, it's racism in general, but it was specifically a form of paternal racism mm. where you get to mm. tell us what's good for us. Yeah. And yeah. this particular provost had not only done it in terms of Reverend Herbert Daughtry coming to King University, he did it in a number of other things. And when you read through, again, this is how you understand what racism is and how it operates. When you read through the points that he had made about other things that we were proposing to do, very, very clearly, it was a form of paternal racism. Him thinking that he was doing uh, something good and beneficent, but underneath that was a race of motivation that's normal, it's that's subconscious and normal. Yeah, yeah. And you know he, what I mean? He didn't think there's a problem. No, he didn't think there was a problem at all. Yeah, but this pro- is, is the this, 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 huh? The provost is, is black? No. no. Oh, I get you. Yeah, there's no. a thing I wanted to bring up because this sounds like this was resolved through a political action. It was. Yeah, so, yeah. now, Dan, you, you had a story about, you know, how you ended up in a meeting that was a political meeting and you didn't even know that and was that, 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 what was happening. Right. We were, we were, that. Well, we were t- uh, talking about um, the, the changes that have, uh, what are obvious right. now in, in Harlem, but like more than 10 years ago, right. uh, it wasn't okay. You know, we right. still were in, in con- control or at right. least the appearance of, of that. But um, I'm at a meeting um, um, where I'm, I happen to be the only black person mm-hmm. 
and I'm, I'm really saying to myself, well, how did I get invited to this right. meeting or became aware? But back, you know, t 10 years or more ago, you know, I'm always looking in the, um, you know, the they had a local um, uh, Harlem News or, mm -hmm. or something. So I'm looking at all these little things. Anything that mentioned sound like it was going to be a, a networking opportunity, right. I'd like jump on it. Right. Okay, now they're having a, a meeting. I remember just a long table right. and <laughs> a long table. And um, at the end of the table is a white male, and he's making he's making a present. He's in the middle of making right. a, a presentation, and um, and there's a whole table full of right. uh, other white males. Okay, and I'm kind of sitting at, near the the back right. of that, and uh, they were going on. Uh, he was going on making this presentation about what's co what's coming to mm -hmm. Harlem and they were talking about 125th Street and and what kind of stores and right. uh, you know needed to, to come uh, so I could just kind of remember like raising my hand and, and I'm saying um, well had anybody considered uh, getting you know uh, um, the opinions of the stakeholders right that was a big word right. back then and and then I recall just all the eyes go like turn down the table and everybody's like looking at right. me and and now I'm like uh oh did you get that impression yeah. that oh look I'm in I, I think I'm in the wrong place right. okay and uh oh did, did I make a, a faux pas and and it was kind of quiet for for a moment and then I was afraid I have to say I was afraid to to say more but the whole idea that here it is okay what is supposed to be you know we have we had the Harlem Development right. Corporation right. You, you know that was supposed to be trying to get money for our folks, right. you know, to uh, make sure that they can kind of further right. develop, and it's already laid out. Right. And I, and at some level, though, maybe this is hindsight. I'm thinking, wait a minute, I should have known better, mm -hmm. because you know there were churches that were, you know, talking about trying right. to develop and, and get money, and of course they can't get money. Right. Okay. They're architect, you know, because I was, you know, uh, working with. Um, uh, the build, you know, people who are trying to get right. uh, permits and, and, and the like, and they're trying to get money. No. Right. You don't see, at that time, you didn't see any, there were many competent black, you know, and, and black and brown right. um, architects and engineers can't get money. Talking about developers, I mean, well, we didn't call the group developer. Right. We just knew right. the people who got skills and couldn't, you know, get to any base uh, with that. Mm -hmm. So um, this whole idea that uh, we've, even when we thought we had, uh, you know, a, right. a handle in it or were part of something that was going on, right. we weren't. Right. Okay, here were the real guys, you know, probably got Making a lot of a access to, you know, money, exactly. you know, big money. And they're already making all the plans about what, right. what is well, going well, on. Let, let me give you my story. You can try to yeah. frame it if you can. Maybe my story. You said you said about ten years ago. I said maybe it was about fifteen to whatever years ago. Mm -hmm. I was a meeting in Harlem. I remember. I, the only thing I remember that Preston Wilcox was there. Also, mm -hmm. right? It was a small group of us, a very small group. I'm talking about maybe five or six, and they were revealing. They were uh, revealing the plans that they had for Harlem before your before they before your your meeting with these with these white guys right mm -hmm. and this was uh this was under uh, under Wrangell and the whole J Raymond Jones club you know you know the J Raymond clubs mm -hmm. Tammany Hall kind of people right? oh, okay. but Danny Farrell uh, mm -hmm. peace and blessings on Danny Farrell's soul but I mean a lot like that and they revealed the whole thing that was going to happen this was before this was like it had to be about 15 years ago it's for the great boys guys. This, 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 <laughs> oh, in, in fact this was right this was before Bill Clinton came to to to, uh, he, to, 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 to Put up his office, his office. His Cox office. Was yeah. In office. Yeah, Cox was in the office. That's right. You know, mm -hmm. and it was it was astounding to me because, in fact, at the same time, I remember because Barbara and Tia was trying to beg people to buy prop, 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 you know, mm -hmm. property on 125th Street, you know, Fifth Avenue, that, that whole car there, like that. And the black people wasn't listening. People was listening. So let me just say this, and I have to say it this way: I'm very sorry. I'm, I, I apologize. No, I don't apologize ahead of time. Look. Black people are led astray by not just forget the politician, by by yes, by these ministers and church folks, the same ones that say they can't get something. 
They're led astray by that. And, they, and those ministers are controlled. I'm going to say it. I'm going to say it. I'm going to say it. They're controlled, right, by not only the, not just the congregation, but the women in the congregation, as well as the power and well as that network that goes out. You know, if you can convince the women, I'm sorry, if you can convince the women to do something, yes. for some for some reason, that. the men follow the women because the men the men don't think. I'm sorry, they don't think. You just say women are emotional. Forget that. Women no, are women thinking, thinking. You know what I mean? And and I think I'm, 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 maybe I'm wrong with this. Maybe I'm wrong with this. But I really do think that that wherever, the white people, whatever you want to call them, they know who to control at one time. Sure, they may, may start with the women. Then they start dealing with the men or the, the preachers or the you know whatever it is. And before you know it, nobody's paying attention to who the puppet masters are, and we all just back in the sink. I'm just just that's a little commentary. I don't. I, I could be wrong, and I probably am wrong because. I'm not that smart. I'm just an audio dramatist. That's all I know. Well, let me just make a comment. I was thinking about um, about how things happen or don't how things happen or don't happen. Um, there was a uh, uh, this is about ten. I'm trying to think because I can, about ten about that ten twelve year point, and this was under the. Um, uh, Bloomberg, Bloomberg. Now Bloomberg had was very instrumental in getting money to churches, okay, mm -hmm. and or, or or nonprofits. All right, um, and I'm thinking, well, that sounds like you know, oh, that's a good idea. Look, he's he's gonna give money out, except the uh, pastor in my church said, no, we're not taking any money from from Bloomberg. And I'm like, oh, what's wrong with him? Why do you want to take any money? But that that was a shrewd thing to do, because if you didn't take, if you took the money, you know there's going to be a comeback at some other point, okay? And if you didn't take any, then there isn't a comeback, and they're going to keep maybe trying to, you know, address the issue and say, look here, you know, wave wave the the money, and make you, you know come in his circle all right he said no in the end he wind up being uh, our minister at the time wind up being in charge of they had some newly formed um it wasn't like all of harlem it was like the north uh, northwest of harlem and it was it, i'm trying to think what they were trying to do there was a point at which the um bloomberg wanted to have the nonprofits in his in his corner Okay, so if you didn't take any money, then you were free to, to then call out things that need. That's the, that's the point I was trying to make. Mm -hmm. You have that freedom to call out things and, and speak truth to power. Mm -hmm. Okay, and I, and I didn't see it that, that way at the beginning. I'm like, oh, you know, we could have got a whole lot more money. We've been doing all these programs. You know, we need that and the like. But he said, we're going to do these things. If we're going to have a program, we're going to fund, fund it, be self-funded. Mm -hmm. And I thought that was excellent. So I'm here to keep that in the record. I think, okay. you, know, I, I, you okay. know, I, to be honest with you, I think that as long as racism in the form of white supremacy exists, all strategies are on the table. Okay. It depends on what strategy uh, presents the, uh, I guess you might say, the path of least resistance at any particular point in time. Okay. Uh, some strategies can allow us to think and get benefits from a particular issue, let's just say economics at a particular point in time uh -huh. well down the road that particular benefit is going to be to our detriment down the road I think the main strategy of racism in the form of white supremacy is to control our thought speech and action and to make us comfortable uh, or agreeable or sympathetic to the type of positions that we present. When you condition a mind to think in a certain kind of way, all right, that makes you susceptible to the positions that a particular oppressor is presenting. And to a large degree, you can get along with that for the immediate benefits. And you may even be thinking that they're gonna be long-term benefits, but actually work to the detriment. One of the great things that our great historian brother, uh, Dr. John Henry Clark used to say uh, was this. The greatest victory of the European over the African was not the conquest of the body, slavery, but the conquest of the mind. All right? 
Another great scholar who was a good friend of mine who passed uh, not too long ago, Dr. Kobe Cambone, talked about cultural misorientation. And I think many, many people of African descent suffer from cultural misorientation. And what he meant by that is we understand more of their culture, we're more acceptable to their, their culture, more agreeable with it, and to a large degree that shapes how we respond to certain kinds of things. All right, and quite often, again, the path of least resistance works through those of us who are more agreeable, more susceptible to the programs that they're putting forward with the idea that this is going to benefit our community, but our short term vision of what's going on really is not taking in consideration the long term effects. And back to the point of these, these ministers and others, one of those strategies quite often has been and continues to be to be uh, to be is our susceptibility to religions okay being religiously controlled I, you know i make a point and you know, again if your enemy controls your religious concepts well good night you know they control you in just about everything else that you do and so there's a whole bunch of strategies at play uh, both francis and neely fuller has put forth put forth those nine areas of uh, human activity, economics, education, entertainment, law, labor, and politics, war, religion, and sex. Well, racism in the form of white supremacy operates on all of those levels, mm -hmm. you mm -hmm. know, got, simultaneously. Yeah, you gotta, you got you to deal with all of them at the same time. That, that octopus is a monster. And I want to say, I, I left out a group. I didn't do it intentionally, but the group I'm talking about it, but it's called the youth or the children, and and I'm saying that what happens is when the you have or the children, youth and, and or the, the children. children. When I say youth, I'm really talking about 18 to say 35. Okay. Children, yeah. I'm talking about under 18, and then especially under 18. If you get somebody between the ages of zero and four, you got them. You get four to nine, you super got them. And when we're when we're being taught by by those same racist white supremacists that operate in all those different areas, then by the time they get to be whatever age we are. You know what I mean? They've been sunk for like how many years? You know. Well, they've been enculturated to see the world in a particular way, and then all of the things within that enculturation that are racist, they won't even see until somebody points it out to them because it's natural, it's normal, mm -hmm. and you just live your life, and you take on a position quite often. As long as the white supremacist, the racists, uh, give you enough to allow you a certain modicum of freedom, and you know you then can you go to the movies when you want. Them. Then in, in their corral. Yeah, yeah. you yeah. don't mind. You know, you don't really mind being oppressed because you never have to think about it the way you should. You just have the freedom to do what you want to do in these little things. But ultimately, it's about the destruction of a community and the destruction of a people. So you don't have to think about it di directly. It's about and divide, so, divide and control. I call <laughs> right. it divide and control. Right. I don't, you don't have to be conquered if you're controlled. In fact, it's better if you're not conquered. Right. Mm -hmm. right, if you're controlled. right here in this building. Uh, certain members of this building, by and large, uh, as far as I know, all of them were black, accused me right here in this building of dividing the building according to race and income for making a statement in one of our board meetings. We're all owners, making a statement in one of the board meetings. And they took that and ran with it and started writing a series of newsletters, uh, very, very simplistic newsletters. I mean, it had a little white paper boy on it, extra, extra, read all about it. They were anonymous. And in one of the passages, my sister happened to point it out to me when she was here, it had a little paragraph where it says, James Conyers is trying to divide the building according to race and income. All right. Well, that's a perfect example of people who are enculturated to support their enemy, no matter what the issue is. It's like when Malcolm used to say, what's the matter, boss? We sit. We sit. Yeah. Well, that's what that was. You know, we sit. Mm -hmm. We sit. And so, again, enculturation or cultural misorientation, as Kobe has pointed out, almost becomes their first line defense against us because quite often you have to sometimes go through our own people before you can even get to the enemy yeah. you know mm -hmm. and it, I, i've told anthony on many occasions at my classes especially at mega evers when i teach introduction to african-american history and culture i normally spend the first five four or five weeks of a 16-week course just getting people oriented to understand how they should understand the history. And the reason for that is, is what Anthony just said. By the time we get them, they've been, been enculturated to see the world through yeah. European eyes. Yeah. So what yeah. we have to do is more or less deprogram them in the same way that you would deprogram somebody who had been pulled out of a religious cult. 
it becomes wow. very similar mm. to that. Mm. You know, you have mm. to pull pull them out. Wow. Now, what is the ultimate point of a block studies course? It's not to know or learn names, dates, and places. Mm -hmm. By the time we get them, that goes through one ear and come out the other. Yeah, that's right. They might remember Malcolm said this or Ida B. Wells said that at the end. But what good does that do? The ultimate point of a black studies course, no matter what we're calling it, whether we're calling Africana studies, black studies, whatever, whatever we're calling it, the ultimate point of that course is for the transformation of the African person, mm -hmm. the transformation mm -hmm. of the mind. Mm -hmm. If the course is just going to give you names, dates, and places, well, that's a wonderful thing for the university, oh but it ain't going to help us in the yeah. long run. It's not going to transform. Exactly. Yeah. We need transform. Mation. Okay. You see what I'm saying? That's what Dr. Clark was talking about. That's what Dr. Marimba Ani talks about. That's what Kobe talked That's what Francis Wilson talked about. That's what Malefia Sante talked about. That's what Wade Noble. I can go on and on and on and on. Mm -hmm. You know, and my name ain't even ranking among those. I'm just little James Conyers, you know what I mean, who's doing my little piece. Yeah. You see what I'm saying? And that's what it means. And all of my classmates agree with me, the ones that I went to school with at Temple University, we're all still in communication with one another. We all still pass notes, you know, and we talk with each other quite frequently about what we face at our various universities. And is it a current yeah. theme that's yeah. happening? Yeah. Yeah. Everybody talks about it in their own ways. It may have some different nuances from place to place, but it's basically the same everywhere. Mm -hmm. I mean, think of a big name in the discipline, like Malefi Asante. Mm -hmm. He was being attacked at Temple yeah. University. Lenny was being oh, attacked. Right. Lenny was being attacked at, uh, attacked at City College. I've certainly yeah. been attacked at Kane University. Mm -hmm. I mean, we've all been attacked or been misunderstood mm -hmm. by somebody. And it's not unusual for us to be misunderstood by a black person. Mm -hmm. Yeah. Well, we're going to have to end it there. Thank you so much, uh, Professor James Kanye. Thank you so much, our sister Diane Sargent in the community. And I want to just say this uh, in, in closing, if I can, just uh, just because uh, we're going to just shut it down on me. Simple. What's important about us, people don't know who we are, but what we are, we are the glue. In other words, we're not the da da you know, mm -mm. we're not the power behind the throne. Mm -mm. We're the glue that holds this thing together. And there's a lot more of us than people realize. And that's what we should be. We should, we should rejoice in that fact that we can, we're still here and we can continue to be the glue and to, to hold this thing together. Because no matter how many people they, they knock off up top or even affect in, in, in the middle, you know, the glue is there and then we will affect a whole more, much more people. It is a pyramid thing, but we're, we're, we're a better pyramid than they realize. Can I just add a sure. comment that you might want to say this for an, another time? Because you know, uh, we were going to talk about health and wellness, mm -hmm. okay? But I think it's, it's in fact, it's kind of intersects with your, um, your closing. And that is, um, if we look at what we do as that, you know, being at that conscious level, um, and we want to continue to, you know, function and, and help with the transformation of the minds, mm -hmm we have to be in a position of better health so that we can weather, weather the struggles, mm -hmm. okay? And um, I don't know, I just Well, let me just, that before you there. turn it off, let mm -hmm. me just add, I'm glad you said that. Uh, Neely Fuller has pointed out nine major areas of human activity. Many of us now consider the 10th area health. Thank you. Mm -hmm. So that's okay. being included in it. Good, all right, excellent. Mm -hmm. Thank you both. <laughs>